you and I. Fine girl from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Laura. I hope by the end of this video you like me enough to subscribe. And if you're joining me for the I don't know how many times you've been here. Hey cousin, because we're family over here. So as you can tell by the title of this video, this video is about the transition from varsity into the adult life, the real world, workspace and everything. So I'm going to be talking about my journey and I'm going to be giving you guys advice as well because there are people that requested this video. So I'm going to be giving the people what they want. <laughs> so it's, without wasting your time, let me get straight into it because I don't want this video to be too long. So I graduated in 2017 and I studied sociology. So I graduated in 2017, July, June. It was it June 2017 with a sociology degree? And immediately, I didn't have any pressure with life, guys. I was relaxed. I spent my days at home. My cousin was having a wedding at the time, so there was really no pressure. I was just waking up, going down my steps, and coming back home, and that was just it. It wasn't until maybe August after the wedding, and my friends started working, and I started feeling some sort of pressure. You will feel it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the real world, like... I can't say you won't feel pressure you will kind of feel it mentally i kind of feel felt some pressure and i felt like i wasn't doing much i needed to be in the workspace i needed to be making money because some people me included don't have the privilege where when you're out of varsity your parents still give you the same amount of money still give you the cars oh well, they never gave us cars but they still give you the things that they gave you it doesn't work like that but you still need to live you still need to do certain things you still need certain things for yourself so it has to be in your hands to work. So I started looking for a job. And my friend had some connections at Chop Chop. If you're in Zimbabwe, that's a restaurant. So that was my first job. I We got there, Chop Chop, 6 a.m., guys. And we were wearing black and white, white shirts, black pants. And they told us we can start the training. And I think the biggest thing for me at chop chop was mentally when i had to humble myself because people would come in people that i know and be like ah, you're working here you know waiting tables for your peers that was kind of like mentally that will humble you that will ground you but it wasn't a situation i was i needed something to do i needed a job i needed the money and that was where i went i kind of had to take myself back and think do i have to wait and sit at home and wait for the dream job to come or i should just do what i can to have some sort of money so i worked there for like two weeks <laughs> until like this customer rubbed me off the wrong way and i blew steam because you know men how men get when they start drinking they look at you they start passing comments and i was like uh-uh i ain't having that so i blew off and i was like no this is not environment for me and i quit the first job i ever quit <laughs> And then I went back home. I sat at home for some time. I kept on applying for jobs. I had my dream. The dream was still there. And then my friend's husband, excuse me, my friend's husband was working at OK Mart. Then they posted a job internally and then he sent me a picture. And my, he sent my friend the picture. My friend sent me a picture and I went for the interview. So one thing I've noticed in the work space when you go for interviews, guys, maybe it's a personal thing, but if you can relate, please let me know. When you go for interviews, the interviews that you go in and you just don't have the confidence, you're like not so sure. But there are those, the jobs I've gotten, I've gotten there and I've had my interview and I've left knowing that this is my job. <laughs> so that's how I felt when I left. I felt like it was mine. My mom asked me how it was and I was like, nah, they're going to call me. I was that confident and I knew it. And they called me and I started a job at a Kmart. I was doing sales. We wore uniform. Uh, white, we started wearing white shirts and black pants and skirts until they gave me a shirt. But yeah, that's how I started at a Kmart. I was wearing uniform. I was kind of grateful that I had to start a job in uniform because I didn't have enough money to buy clothes to wear every day. So it was cost saving for me because I just had to wear the same thing every day. So I didn't have to spend so much money on a formal wear. And then I worked at OK Mart from September, October, November, December, January. And then in January, I left because I got a better job. I got a better job at this company. I don't want to share where I've worked because people can be very weird on social media. But anyway, so I got a better job and I was working in admin. I was doing admin for this company. 
and i was working with consultants so they basically spend the day out the consulting and i spend the day mostly alone in the office it was great work great, great workspace because i was alone most of the time and i was enjoying it i wore clothes i took pictures i think i was just enjoying it things were working well was close to home transport wise i didn't have to get into two combis because like okay Kmart, i just had to use one so it was a great thing for me and then after six months i felt like it wasn't enough you know when you start working at a job that's better than your previous one you kind of forget the dream you kind of feel you kind of relax you kind of feel like this is it and after six months after getting there after getting used to it you kind of feel like no you the, you get you remind yourself that this is not it so i woke up one day and it wasn't the dream so i spent some months there just wishing and hoping and applying for another job but nothing ever came so i already had plans to relocate uh so and my friends and family here were very supportive about it and they were like you should you should come this 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 this, this. so in january 2019 i left my job i in february i relocated i first went to my best friend's place in pumalanga and that was kind of you know i was shaky i didn't feel like i was getting enough jobs because you know when you leave and you come back you come here you you people feel like you get here and instantly things work out and that's not the case for everybody you know so that's what i thought as well and it didn't really happen that way so i left and i came to my family space here where i am and then in april i started working at the place that i'm working now it was great guys the money was good the environment was good again i was wearing uniform i'm still wearing uniform <laughs> So I don't have to spend as, spend as much money on clothes every day again, which works well for me. But again, after certain months, I started to feel like, I, I'm starting to feel like it's not enough. I want bigger, I want better. Sorry again. <laughs> which is the feeling that you'll always get because you should never forget the dream. When you always start a new job, it's, you, it's great, you're happy, but never forget the dream. Never forget what you want. And as for me right now, where I am with the journey is that I am happy with my employer. I am hoping he's happy with me as well. But yeah, I'm hoping for something bigger, something better, you know. Eventually, I want to get to the job that I want and do what I want, you know. So I'm hoping and applying. I hope the time I do a follow-up video, I'm going to be telling you guys a different story. Speaking it into existence. But anyway, so here's what I can say. The advice I can give you about the transition from my experience. The transition, you have to prepare yourself mentally. That's the first thing. Mentally, you're getting from a place where you kind of are handed things to you. The worry about what you eat, where your money comes from, is your parents. When you're in college, they worry about that. For most people, that is. And now that you're out of college, that's your worry. Now you have to think about your life like okay now i'm this age what do i want and usually we have the dream written out i want to get job corner office you know with the view with the salary and with the company car benefits medical aid you know you want that and some people literally just leave college and already get that that's their time some people leave they run their father's company that's their time for some people like me it takes longer it still goes on for a while and you have to just be patient with yourself. The worst thing you can ever do is compare yourself because you will get the urge to want to compare yourself because as you know, your peers are different. Um, some people have to still buy groceries at home, have to still renovate the houses they grew up in, they have to buy furniture at home. And for some people, they don't even have to give back money at home. Home is still giving them money even after they're working. So the worst thing you can do for yourself is to try and compare yourself to your peers because when you're in college things are the same you're in the same school doing the same courses eating the same things well sometimes you know there's that difference but yeah you kind of are living the same life but now it's different people are driving some got cars from their parents some bought cars already because you need to know that your story is different and if you understand that if you know your background and you know that your story is different, things will be different. Some people have uncles and aunts in positions and they can get them the jobs. It's very easy, guys. Like, it happens, guys. You get there, you're qualified for the place, you're the best person for the job, and then someone just calls and says, 
I have my cousin. I have my little sister coming for the interview tomorrow. Give her the job. That's how it works out there, guys. It's about who you know and the grace of God. Let me not undermine that. I'm going to speak about just about that just now. But yeah, just don't compare yourself with your peers because especially the peers that are out of the country if you're in Zimbabwe. Because when you're in Zimbabwe, things are a little bit tighter. Things are harder. When you're in South Africa, you get things on credit. So it's easy to get a car. It's easy to get certain things because you can get it on credit. Zimbabwe, cash. So it's going to take you longer because you have, instead of paying um, 2,000 rands a month, let's say, or 3,000 rands a month for their car for two years, you have to save up that lump sum to get a car. So I'm going to get a car tomorrow and you're going to have to wait three years. It's still the same thing. So try not to compare yourself to your peers, especially the ones out of the country. Live within your means. If you earn $100, live within that. There's no shame, guys, in going to a restaurant once a month. There's no shame in even going once in two months. There's no shame in going once in a while. <laughs> guys, don't try and be like your friends that will go to every social thing going on to unplug, cook out, what. Don't try to live out of your means, especially if you're doing it on your own. Because what will happen is that you will get to a point where at the end of the day, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to look back and think, it's been three years. I don't have anything saved up. Because you've been wanting things that are not in your reach. Know how much you earn, know your expenses, and live within your means. Try not to over splurge or try to live a lifestyle that you lived in college. Focus on getting yourself out there. Yes, enjoy your money, have certain things, but try to... Just stay grounded and live within your means. There's no shame in buying clothes twice a year. There's no shame. You know, guys, just accept your position. I struggled with that because the mistake that we have is that we get these jobs. Money is nice, guys. <laughs> and if you don't have discipline, the money that... I remember when I got the job that I'm working at right now. The first month, I used to use it. Like, I didn't use it for anything sensible. Just get paid, send money home and just buy everything and anything and just because you you're not there yet financially mentally you don't have that discipline but then my mom was like to me one day hey we've been watching it's time <laughs> you need to grow up so i also feel like you need to just take a step back and try and realize that you need to do things within your means and that's what you need to do in this life and I think the biggest advice I can give, like I've said before, is just to stay praying, guys. I have been lost countless times. Because the world is a very rough place. The world is nice, guys. <laughs> but I can say that by the grace of God, God saved me. I think that's the story time for another day. But the grace of God saved me and it keeps saving me because I keep coming back to this place where I just remind of what God has done for me and what God keeps doing for me. So stay grounded, guys. Don't get distracted because the world as we know it is distracting. People have different journeys. Some people we want to emulate don't even follow the godly path. So don't put pressure on yourself. Trust God's timing. Plan stay focused on the dream know that even if it happens today in the next two years or what as long as you stay focused on the dream and never forget the dream and you pray and just understand that everything is a lesson whether you start working in the waitressing world or you work in a job that has nothing to your degree you did medicine and now you're doing sales okay that's a big example but yeah there, there could be people that just know that the economy that we're in is that place and also just respect everyone that you see guys doing these jobs because working in the restaurant business for two weeks yes you meet people ne? that give you this attitude that they feel like you're uneducated you went for grade seven just respect everybody that you see because some of these people are working these jobs are more educated than you but the economy just isn't favoring them so just humble yourself and respect them as well but yeah, just get into the adult life or working world with the hum with your humble self and pray. Your story could change just like that. So stay focused on the dreams, stay in faith, stay with God, and don't compare yourself to anybody because people's stories are different. So anyway, I hope you guys learned a thing or two in this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, 
please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you're in the working environment or you just you know yeah in the world leave a little advice for the for girls and our guys that are in college that are transitioning or even the people that are already in the work life in the adult real world you know just leave a little bit of advice somebody could need it i hope you guys enjoyed this video bye